Hello, I'm Seema and thank you for returning for part 2 of the video titled Heisenberg's Uncertainty Principle. Now, I just told you that if the object has the mass of 1 milligram, that mass is, um, is so large that even for a mass of 1 milligram, the wave-like nature of an electron or of the object would not be visible. And therefore, in Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, the, uncer the product of the uncertainties in the position and the velocity is to the extent of 10 to the power minus 28, which is very, very small and is almost negligent. So now, if we take an electron and we carry out, if we apply the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle to an electron, we observe that for an electron which has a mass of 9.11 into 10 to the power minus 31 kgs, when the mass is so small and we find out the product between the, uh, the error in velocity and the error in position, we find we find that this product would be equal to 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34, which is Planck's constant in kg meter square second inverse, upon 4 into 3.1416, which is the uh, four, uh, 4 is the number, and this is the value of pi into the mass of an electron, which is 9.11 into 10 to the power minus 31 kgs. When we carry out the calculations, we find the product of the two uncertainties is equal to 10 to the power minus 4 meter square second inverse. Now, if this is now this value 10 to the power minus 4 is substantially large in comparison to 10 to the power minus 28 that we did for, a, for an object of a mass 1 milligram. Let us assume now that the error in position is 10 to the power of the extent of 10 to the power minus 8 meters that is delta x is 10 to the power minus 8 which means that the electron may be present anywhere within a range of 10 to the power minus 8 meters which is actually very very small so if that is the case then what would the value of delta v be we just calculated the value of product of delta v and delta x is 10 to the power minus 4. Therefore, delta v would be 10 to the power minus 4 upon delta x. So, we said delta v would be equal to 10 to the power minus 4 upon delta x. So, the velocity, this would be in meters per second now. Meters per second because this is in meters. Yeah. And this is meter square second inverse so if you cancel out the units this would be meters per second so 10 to the power minus 4 upon 10 to the power minus 8 would be equal to the error in velocity would be 10 to the power plus 4 meters per second 10 to the power plus 4 means how much is it how much would the error in velocity be it would be 10,000 meters per second, an error of so, such a large error. So we find that when the error is so large at this point for an electron, the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle can easily be seen because the error, the uncertainty here becomes significant. And that's the reason why we said that the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is significant only for microscopic objects. It's not significant even for an object which has a mass of one milligram. So what was the result of these two new discoveries? That is that matter has dual nature and the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Both of these shed light in the drawbacks of the Bohr's model, that certain paths or definite trajectories are impossible. It's not possible for the Bohr's model, as he said, that there are definite paths that the electrons follow, and as long as it is in the orbit, it neither loses nor gains energy. These definite paths, it's impossible to find out the definite path. And to talk in terms of certainty in, uh, for an electron or subatomic particles also seemed a little uh, difficult now. It was not possible to talk about, uh, uh, okay, this is the electron and this is the path in which it is moving. Now, it, we now started talking of electrons in terms of probability that this uh, probably the electron is present because 
there is an error of h upon 4 pi always so we cannot say it is certainly here or certainly this is the path this probably is where it is present and this is probably the path that it might be following so now the picture of certainty started blurring a little and we started talking in terms of probability and i've written this in red because this word the probability of finding an electron it formed the backbone of the quantum mechanical model we no longer spoke in definite terms and we said that electrons are only present it's only probable and therefore there were no orbits they were orbitals three-dimensional spaces where there was a probability of finding an electron so precise statements of momentum and position of electrons they had to be replaced with the term probability so now in the next video we are going to move on to the quantum mechanical model of an atom and we'll take it from the probability thank you for watching please like the video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel and return for more videos on chemistry bye bye